Well, the clinical trial that we're performing is for a cancer called osteosarcoma, which is the most common type of cancer of bone in children and adolescents. For many types of cancer in children, we don't know exactly what the underlying cause is, unlike adults where environmental exposures can certainly have play a big role in uh, the development of the cancer. So in many cases, these are probably developmental uh, problems that occur. And in fact, with osteosarcoma, it occurs most commonly in children during the ages of their growth spurt, which probably means that it's related to normal growth of bone that's gone awry. Like most childhood cancers, uh, osteosarcoma is relatively rare. Uh, there are about 500 children under the age of 20 each year diagnosed in this country with it. About two-thirds of patients will be cured of their disease if they present um, at the time they're diagnosed with no evidence of disease spread. It's more difficult to cure patients who have evidence of tumor spread primarily to the lung at the time that they present. The treatment of osteosarcoma actually hasn't changed much in the last several decades. The primary treatment for the tumor itself is surgery. We also use chemotherapy that's given both before and after surgery, and those chemotherapy agents have been the same for the last several decades. One of the reasons for the study we're doing is that it's a very toxic chemotherapy regimen that's associated with a lot of side effects, some of which can be permanent. The primary aim of the clinical trial is to try to reduce particularly the kidney toxicity that can be uh, caused by two of the common drugs that we use called cisplatin and methotrexate. The mechanism by which they produce kidney damage is different and so our approach to each of these is different. We are looking at another medication that now is used to treat excessive acid production in the stomach to try to prevent the cisplatin from being taken up by the cells in the kidney that are damaged. The nice thing about the way this drug works is that it doesn't prevent the uptake of the cisplatin into the cancer, so it only blocks the side effect without blocking the effect of the drug that we want to achieve on the cancer itself. With methotrexate, we think that the kidney damage is a result of very high amounts of drug in the urine actually causing the damage, and so we're looking at ways to prolong the administration of the drug to try to lower the amount of drug in urine and prevent the, the damage that can occur. And, when that happens with methotrexate, it can cause the methotrexate elimination to be delayed and that enhances all of the other side effects of the drug, so it can be a, a really a medical emergency when it occurs. Cisplatin also causes deafness and it's a cumulative effect, meaning that it builds up over time with each dose and it's a permanent effect and sometimes that can, actually can continue to worsen after the treatment is completed. It's more of a problem in younger children than in the age of children that we treat with osteosarcoma, but it's, it can um, affect uh, long-term speech development and also can result in patients needing hearing aids. And this drug that we're using to block the kidney damage may also help to prevent the loss of uh, hearing as a result of cisplatin as well. So we're really trying to prevent two pretty significant side effects uh, that are caused by these two drugs. Our goal is to allow patients who develop this cancer to live a full and normal life after they complete their treatment. Obviously, uh, kidneys are organs that are very important to you for the rest of your life. When we treat children with cancer, we have to be concerned about preserving function for 70 years, not five or 10 or 15 years as, if, as you would if you were treating somebody who was in their 60s or 70s. So it's very important to preserve as much function as we can while they're receiving the treatment because these organs have to work for them lifelong. And so it's, uh, I think this is a, anytime we can prevent long-term effects of these treatments, it's a, it's a great benefit to patients who survive. So the quality of life of our patients on these studies is very important. It was the driving factor for why we undertook this study and how it's designed. And there are a number of ways in which we're trying to measure that. We use the standard measures like performance status that are things that we observe and score, but we're also very interested in getting patients and parents' opinions, and that's why we developed a patient-related outcomes survey that they fill out before every cycle to tell us how they're doing. And this was specifically designed for adolescents and young adults, so it has things that relate to what they normally do in their lives, not what an adult would do in terms of their employment and family matters. So it's what they, you know, whether they're interacting with their friends on a regular basis and how they're spending their lives and how we'd expect an adolescent to spend their life. And we're very concerned and interested to see how the treatment is affecting them and whether the therapeutic maneuvers that we're using will also impact on the way they perceive the effects of the treatment. The nice thing about the study design is that if it's successful, we're going to know right away. It won't be following patients for three to five years uh, before we can find out, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to use these short-term 
markers of kidney damage, so we'll know immediately. That's the first thing that's important. Secondly, osteosarcoma is studied within the large cooperative group, the Children's Cancer Oncology Group. And the last trial that was conducted was developed in 2003, and it typically can take up to 10 years to complete accrual to the studies and to wait uh, the five or six years, whatever it takes, to get the results from those trials back before moving on to the next. And right now, there's not currently plans for a study in osteosarcoma because there aren't um, ideas available either from the last study that's still being completed um, or for, from laboratories to come up with a new therapy and I think that this allows us the opportunity to take the results from a trial like this um, and present them at a meeting and uh, hopefully if it's successful to move it into a much larger study. Clinical trials like this that are done at a single institution that use a novel design and a relatively small population are generally not supported now by federal research funds, but they're very important in terms of looking at new ideas, new approaches to treating cancer that aren't necessarily um, on, the, on the radar screen in the large cooperative groups. And for foundations like Gateway to, to completely support a trial like this, to provide support for all the resources, the personnel, the lab testing that's needed to conduct an intensive study like this is critical for us to develop uh, new approaches and new treatments for these uh, diseases, both in children and in adults.